Uh, rate of force development, again, the ultimate goal is to produce power in the competitive event. Um, so sports are going to occur at the highest velocities possible. So that um, competition velocity is way down here on that force velocity curve on 100% max to, to zero. Uh, it's going to be right at almost that zero, maybe slightly above. Um, you still have to consider body weight. Um, but these sports are going to happen at the highest velocity possible. We're never going to mimic those in the weight room. Like the, the idea of being sport specific um, and, and recreating those is, is, um, is ridiculous. Like you, your, your goal becomes to provide your athletes with the physical tools necessary and the adaptations required to then go apply that on the field. So that's the um, energy systems that we talked about earlier, the strength, power, and speed. And you can train those in a specific manner based on the sport. Like we talked about the cluster sets, the, the time sets, or based on their needs, how advanced they are. All of those can be considered, but the idea that we're recreating um, um, sport-specific movements in the weight room is, is just not there. You can still prepare muscles for the high velocities, but not necessarily the actual sport itself. Um, so we're trying to maximize force production in the minimal time available. So with the idea that maximal force requires 0.3 to 0.4 seconds and an elite sprinter's ground contact time is between 0.08 and 0.12 seconds. Obviously, that's not enough time to produce max force. So absolute strength is critical because, again, if, you're, if you don't have that strength, you're just producing weakness a little bit faster. But we do have to, at some point, shift away from the max strength idea and get more into power and speed. 